by his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true, by his mercy he Hello and good morning. Welcome once again to Lower Marion Baptist Church Sunday morning service. Today is May 24th in the year of 2020 as we continue to struggle through this time of quarantine and this time of COVID-19 as we continue to not be able to gather physically. I praise God for the opportunity and the blessing of being able to gather digitally. You are welcome here with us. And when we reopen, we invite you to come and participate with us here at Lower Marion Baptist Church. I pray that today God would speak to you in a very real and a very special way. That the Lord would open up your ears to hear, your mind to understand, and your heart to receive the blessings that are yet to come. Today's call to worship comes from Psalm 68. Let God rise up. Let the enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee before the Lord. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Lift up a song to the Lord who rides upon the clouds. God's name is the Lord. Be exultant before God. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God and God's holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. God leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in parched land. The word of the Lord. In this day, we lift up all of our petitions before the Lord. We pray that God would hear our voices, that God would be with us on this journey. We lift up all of those things that are within and we present them to God. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, our God. We in awesome wonder consider all that your hands have made. Lord, we look out upon this world. We look out upon our world. We look out upon our life and we feel the stresses of all that is happening. And Lord, we present them to you. We ask, Lord, that you would please forgive us our sins, forgive us our stumbles, forgive us for doing things that we shouldn't, Lord. But forgive us more, Lord, for not doing the things that we should. Lord, in this day, we come before you just as we are, asking that your spirit would be poured out. Lord, we lift up all of those who are on our hearts and minds, our friends, our family, our fellow sojourners, Lord. Those whom we know about that are struggling through illness, through COVID, through all these things, Lord. We present them to you and ask that you would walk alongside them. We pray for those who mourn, those who are journeying this road of grief. We place them before you, Lord, asking that you would be their peace 
that you would be their strength, that you would be their light, Lord, and guide them through this dark valley. Lord, we have so many things on our shoulders and on our hearts and on our minds that we are just inundated with stuff. Lord, in this day, I pray for focus. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to learn how to move aside the things that are distracting, to help us, Lord, to filter out the things that are not of benefit. Help us, Lord, to not focus on the things that we don't need, but, Lord, to focus on the things that are at hand that are beneficial. Lord, I pray and lift up all of my brothers and sisters who are watching and ask that your spirit would descend upon them and that you would speak to their heart and to their mind, Lord. They need you. Lord, remind us that we are not alone, nor have we ever been alone. Remind us, Lord, that we live in a broken world. And though things may be broken and things may go wrong, you are still with us in the midst of it. You help us in the midst of what's happening. You are with us on this journey of difficulty. You continue to inspire and encourage and provide light and help us through dark times, Lord. Help us to remember that. We praise you. Lord, I give you all honor and all glory. I thank you, Lord, for your blessings that continue to be poured out. I thank you, Lord, for those difficult moments that allowed me to get to this point. And I pray for all of my brothers and sisters that are in the midst of difficulty. Even if they can't see beyond where they are. I pray, Lord, at this moment that you place a spark of hope into their heart and remind them that today is not always how it's going to be. Tomorrow is coming. The moments are moving. And one day you will be out of the craziness, the chaos, the darkness, the valleys of wherever it is that you are. There will be a day where you won't be there anymore. Lord, help them to make it to that day. Lord, we glorify your name. We give you all honor and all praise. And we pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
Today's text comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. In this morning, we are in 2 Corinthians, the second letter from Paul to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians is probably one of the most popular writings of Paul. And 2 Corinthians might not get as much accolades, but speaks so much to what's happening. The church of Corinth was a very, what I would say, a modern church in a lot of ways because the problems that they have or the issues that are discussed in both of the writings are very similar to issues that we still go through today. So Paul is writing to a church that's going through how to be a church what it means to be together, what does faith mean, what does it mean to struggle, what does it mean to bring together, how do we not have a class system, how do we keep everyone at the table together. Paul is constantly going through this theological discussion during these two books, these two writings, excuse me. And then we get to this point towards the end of 2 Corinthians, when, when Paul starts to share some of his things some of what's happened to him, some of what's gone on with him. And he says, three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. Something was ailing him. We don't have an exact um, approximation of what it was. There are those who say he was still somewhat blinded from his experience on the Damascus Road. There are some who say uh, he had stomach issues or intestinal issues. There are many different theories and many different things stated, but we really don't know for sure what his ailment was. But what we do know is that something was hindering him. Something was preventing him from feeling that, that he was at 100%. Something was not allowing him to, to go full bore and to go into ministry as much as he wanted. He did everything he could, but then something he felt was preventing him. And so he pled with God and said, please take this away. Three times I appealed to the Lord. Three times in biblical language, in the Bible itself, from the Old Testament to the New, and uh, throughout history and ancient times, we see that numerology is very important. There are certain numbers that are very important. In this case, three, and we have three times he appealed to the Lord, and we have Jesus telling Peter three times, do you love me? When we have Peter denying Jesus three times, and we have the Trinity in the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. We have Jesus three days in the tomb. And so three is a very important number, just like the number seven is, just like the number 12 is for the 12 disciples and the 12 tribes, just like the 40 is, you know, 40 years in the desert, 40 days in the desert. There are all of these numbers that are important in this case, he pled with the Lord three times. I appealed to God and asked that this would leave me. This is Paul, the great apostle Paul. Paul, whose theology has influenced what the church is today. Who we are 
is an influence of what Paul has written. Who we are as the church is influenced because of the writings of Paul greater than all other authors in the New Testament. He has the most writings and the most letters that became New Testament, that became scripture. So Paul is probably the most important figure in the New Testament. And on a side note, I argue with Paul all the time as I read and as I struggle, as I bring scripture and try to understand, I wrestle with Paul at times because I don't always agree. And that's the awesomeness of scripture, is that even though this is written 2,000 years ago, or almost 2,000 years ago, when we read it and struggle with it even today, it speaks to our heart, it speaks to our mind. That's how we can affirm and confirm that this is part of God's word. When we're able to continue to delve in and to learn and to grow, God continues to speak in the midst of writings that were done almost 2,000 years ago. So here, Paul, the great apostle, one of the most influential people, had something that was preventing him from going forward like he would like. And he pled with the Lord. And God did not just come down and take it from him. God didn't just come and heal him. God didn't just say, this burden that you have upon you, let me grab it and move it out. Instead, the answer was, my grace is sufficient for you. And that's difficult. It's difficult to start to comprehend this. My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. And as we think about it, I don't know if you are like me at all, so I, I just put this upon myself. But there are moments and times when I pray to God and like there's something that I need, there's something that I want, there's something that I'm feeling if I'm sick, if my family, something's going on. Like I pray and I have faith that God is going to do something. That God is going to say, here is the burden, I'm taking it away. Here is your illness, I'm taking it away. Here are the things that are difficult, I'm taking it away. That's what I want. When I'm struggling, I want God to come forth and say, don't struggle anymore. Kind of like when you were young and you jumped into the pool and maybe somebody, an adult, came and picked you up out of the pool. That's what you want. When, when something has happened and you've fallen in, you want God to come, grab you, and pick you up and take you out. Even Paul, the great apostle, maybe he expected this, maybe this is what he wanted, maybe this is what he needed, this is what he was praying for. Three times I came to the Lord and said, Lord, take this from me. And the answer that came back was, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. That goes against Everything we've been taught about power and strength. Yet it is exactly what Jesus showed us on the cross and in his ministry. We have this vision of power. We have this vision of strength where it's about building up. It's about being as powerful as possible. It's about being this thing that has evolved into this ruggedness. I often hear people who are going through difficult times, I wish 
I was stronger. Or I thought I was strong. And here in this text, Paul is taking that analogy, that thought, that vision of what strength is and is flipping it on his head. Because we are not strong because of what we do and how we do it. Because I do 25 push-ups a day, therefore I'm getting stronger. Because I walk or I power walk or I run, therefore I'm getting stronger. It is more than just what you can do. Because as the answer comes to Paul, my grace. God's grace is beyond sufficient, is more than we can expect, is greater and is the greatest. And it's here for you. God's grace. Because when we are weak, then we are strong. Because we lean on the power of God. When we are at our weakest is when we become the strongest. When we feel we have lost everything and we have hit rock bottom, that is when we become strongest because then we can truly lean completely on the power of God. I know this sounds a little fantastical. It sounds completely opposite of what we've believed or what we have learned as humans. Strength doesn't come from weakness. That's what we've been taught. Strength doesn't come from struggle. But yet, here, God is reminding us. When we are weakest, then, and only then, are we strongest. Because as humans, as people, what we tend to do is we lean on God during these weak times. And then as we gain strength, we push God away. And we move farther from the Lord because we feel we are strong enough. Almost like a baby taking steps. At first, they need to hold on. They want to hold on to your hands. But then, as they gain the ability to do it on their own, they go running. So, yes, I'm calling you a baby. Because instead of depending and leaning and putting yourself into God's hands at all times, you think you are strong enough. You think that you are big enough. You think that you are so mature and so amazing that you can do it on your own when the reality is. God is alongside you at all times. And it is on God's strength. It is in God's hands. It is on God's power that we lean on and it is at that time that we are strongest vulnerability is a word that tends to be shunned uh, get, we tend to to not want to do that or be that it's a it's considered a weakness it's considered something that is not for me you can do that me, I am not going to be vulnerable. Yet, we believe in a God who shows us vulnerability and shows us the power of what it means to be vulnerable. Jesus, who walked among us, Jesus, who was almost stoned Jesus who felt the rejection, Jesus who cried when his best friend died, Jesus who was betrayed by his best friend and felt that loss, 
Jesus who was denied by another of his best friends. Jesus who was taken before the people who was flogged. Jesus could not have been more vulnerable or showed us more vulnerability. Jesus, son of God, God incarnate, Jesus himself showed us what it means to be vulnerable and showed us what, how power can come through weakness. Jesus, who gave up all of eternity, all of power, all of everything to be here with us, became vulnerable and weak and died on a cross and on Sunday morning changed it all. He showed us the power of vulnerability. The power that comes through being weak. The power that comes from leaning completely on God. Jesus showed us. And Paul goes on to say, you know what? You're right, Lord. Therefore, I am content with my weakness. I am content when I'm insulted. I am content when hardships come, when persecutions arise. I am content when calamities seem to be going on around me for the sake of Christ. And he concludes this with, for whenever I am weak, then I am strong. We are going through this time of weakness. We are struggling through this time of vulnerability. It is arousing a lot of different things in all of these different people. We see people reacting. We see people lashing out. We see that these white supremacists are coming out of the woodwork, not because of their normal beliefs, but because they're feeling that they have to lash out to prove their own strength. They're afraid of their own vulnerability because they realize that they are just as weak as everyone else. We see these people who are coming forth, who are struggling within themselves, and rather than dealing with what is happening within, rather than allowing themselves to be vulnerable, rather than leaning on God because of the weakness that they feel, they're lashing out at others to prove to prove how strong they are. To prove that they are not just like everyone else. And yet, this infection, this disease, this COVID-19 affects everyone and weakens everyone and continues to take all lives. So we need to realize our vulnerability. We need to accept that we are vulnerable. All of us are vulnerable. And we've always been vulnerable. There's this false comfort and, and this false narrative about how strong we are. But yet the strength doesn't come from us, from me personally. It comes from the Lord within. It comes from the community together. It comes from the journey that we take. Not the me, not the I. Don't be so narcissistic and selfish to think that it is your strength. Because if I had to do this on my own, I would not be here anymore. It is because of the community. It is because of the people around me. It is because of the God within. It is because of God who is around me. It is because I have been able to lean on the strength that comes from God. That I am here today. It is because of that that you are here today. There are those around you who have supported you in one way or another. Who have helped you. No one ever does anything on their own. We walk this journey 
together. Because alone we are weak, but together we are strong. Alone we are weak, but in God we are strong. Our weakness can be our strength if we lean on the power of God. Our weakness allows us to be vulnerable before God. And in our vulnerability, God is able to lift us up. Because God's grace is sufficient, is sufficient not only for you and me, but for every human being present, every human being who has ever existed, every human being who will ever exist. God's grace is sufficient for all. God's grace lifts us up when we are weakest. And God's power is made perfect when our weakness allows us to be vulnerable and allow God to do what God needs to do within. So I will rejoice. I will be content in my weakness because I know when I am weakest, then I am strong. And now we come to this sacred moment. We come to this time of opening up ourselves, of becoming vulnerable, of allowing God to be the strength in the midst of our weakness. We come to this time and I encourage you, if you have never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your time. I encourage you to come to God, to come before the Lord, to open your heart, to open your mind, to realize the vulnerability that is necessary and to understand that in our weakness, in your weakness, that's when you truly are strong. So if you would like to accept Christ in this day, I ask you to pray these words with me. Say, Lord, I repent of all my sins. 
Lord, I ask that you enter my heart and my being. Lord, I pray that you would help me to live a life worthy of you. Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And now I pray for all of my brothers and sisters who are struggling with their faith at this time. I bring you before the Lord and pray that God would be with you. Let's pray together. Lord, I pray for all of my brothers and sisters who at this time are struggling with their faith. Who at this time, Lord, feel that they are too weak and vulnerable. And instead of turning to you, they're trying to gain their own strength. Lord, in this moment, I pray in the name of Jesus. That you would envelop them with your spirit. Lord, I pray that you remind them that your grace is sufficient. And beyond that, it is greater than we can imagine that your mercy and your grace abide in ways that we cannot even imagine, Lord. I pray at this moment that even if their faith is holding on by a string, that you would hold that string hard. Lord. Help them, Lord, in the midst of their struggle to understand and to open their eyes to see that even though they may struggle, you are there with them. Even though they may doubt, you continue to guide. Even though they feel what they feel, that you are still present in their life. And we thank you for that. Lord, I pray for all of those who are struggling through illness, struggling with so many things. I place them before you. I pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you for being here with us in this morning. I thank you for the blessing of your fellowship via these digital means. I continue to pray with and for you and pray that you continue to be safe. As we pray for safety, I also encourage you to be wise, to wear your mask, to wear gloves when necessary, to be wise in terms of social distancing, to be able to start moving forward. We hope to, at some point in June here at Lower Marion, to at least begin the process of reopening. So I encourage you to continue to follow us here on YouTube and Facebook, but also when we open, to be here with us as we go through the process of regathering in our fellowship. I praise God for God's mercy and grace that has brought us to this moment. And I pray that God continue to keep you safe. May the blessings of the Lord be poured out upon you. And may the guidance of the Holy Spirit encourage you. And may the redemption of our Lord Jesus Christ fill your heart and being. Amen.